So, yesterday, where were you when the OHSA made the final cancellation announcement for your state tournament your senior year? Um, I was at Josh Breeding's house, um, kind of just hanging out with him, and uh, I saw the the tweet. I don't know, some somebody tweeted out there, and you know, I, I was kind of expecting it. Um. You know, so it, you know it didn't come as a big shock, but you know it still sucks to uh, to to hear it officially. But yeah, that's where I was. What was your dad saying to you in this whole situation? So you're a state champ last year, runner up as a sophomore, six as a freshman. So, mm. so you got a state title. Let's just like you at least got a state yeah. title, right? Let's just say that at least, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. You know, Nate doesn't have a state title yet. Um. Basically, all the Burnett so far have won state titles. They've had a chance to wrestle in high school, right? I mean, so you you at least got that done. Does misery yeah. love company? Do you guys is it at least do you take a little comfort at least knowing that all the other guys that were your weight class are in the same situation? Yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I, you know, everybody wants to compete. You know, that's you know, that's a big thing is go out and scrap for a state title. But um, you know, that being said, it's you know, everybody's in the same position. You know, it's, it's hard to feel bad for yourself when, when you know there's a lot of other guys that, that haven't got what you got. So, um, you know, that's kind of where I am. You know, I, it would have been cool to, to, to go out there again this year and, you know, that we, we, we really wanted that. But, um, you know, right now it's just kind of kind of is what it is. You guys were in a really good situation to win a team title this year in Division One in Ohio. You know, you're a top mm -hmm. 25 team in the country. Your dad's built that from the ground up. Um, I don't know if in 97, 98, I don't know if your dad had a state qualifier. No, not for a while. Uh, Paul Felton, I think in 02 was our first qualifier or like my dad's first state qualifier. So it so. took your dad four years to get a state qualifier. Then you become yeah. a top 25 team in the country. He's got both of his sons in a position. You know, you guys were runner up in the duels to St. Ed's in a barn burner of a duel. One of the best mm -hmm. duels, probably the best duel I've ever called. Yeah. Um, and seen, you know, at the high school level, you know, you're beating them twenty to nothing. And they come back and they and it comes down to heavyweight and they pin you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right there in a tournament's very different. How many qualifiers did you guys get out? And you were in their district, right? Yeah, I think we had nine with an alternate, so nine guys officially going down. What they have? Twelve. Twelve, yeah. But they had a couple guys, you know, that we didn't know about. So, um. You know, we, we didn't know how they would do at state, so we liked we liked how we were how we were positioned to to go in. But um, yeah. You know, it's just like uh, talking to Scott Goodell, the coach at Rutgers. Um, they think they got a pretty good di guy with with Dylan Shaver, right? Yeah. And, and you've been yeah. with that guy since little kids. Mm -hmm. He's not going to get a chance to win a state title. Um, and it's kind of weird because you're a real mature old soul. I like to call you. <laughs> you got a state title. That guy never got one. What do you say to our teammate like that? Yeah, um, you know th that that's that's the guy that I really feel for right now. You know him. Um, Ben Dor is another senior on our team who who's never got to the state tournament until this year, and he doesn't get to experience his first state tournament. So you know those are the guys that I'm really hurting for. And um, you know so, something that I just tell Dylan is is there's there's bigger things down the road. You know it sucks right now, but uh, you know you're you're going to Rutgers. You're you're going to get a good education and, and you're going to be a better person probably because of this. So I, that's, I, that's what I would tell him. And Dorr is going to play football at Lake Erie College. He's doing football wrestling, isn't he? Yeah, at Lake Erie, yeah. So he's got a pretty good deal too, you know what I mean? Yeah, same kind of thing, yep. What's it been like being a part of your dad's program and seeing how your dad does things? They The Burnettes do things a lot of the right way. Maybe it's a crazy way, but it's usually yeah. the right way, right? Yeah. What's that been yeah, like coming no, up through that? I've, I've been super, I'm super grateful, you know, to be around, um, you know, people that, that inspire me and, you know, like my dad and Scotty and, uh, you know, it's just been cool on um, the past, you know, however many years I've been wrestling just, just to be around them because it's, it's more spending time with your family too. So, uh, you know, I've gotten to get better as a wrestler and, you know, be, be close with my family at the same time. So that, that's really cool. You guys are obviously super close to the Burnett's. Um, when you look at the situation, you know, um, your grandpa, Ron, Ron passed away two years ago now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, November. November, two years. So just over two, two and a half years ago, basically. Yeah. He was a big part of the way you guys do things. Um, 
Yeah. And that, you know, that was obviously tough. I remember I went and visited him in hospice. Um, yeah. And, you know, you guys have, you've had some stuff happen in your family, um, some tough things like that. You just lost an uncle. Um, mm-hmm. How do you guys handle this? And what, you know, how does your dad guide you to this? How's your mom guide you to this being such a close family? Yeah. So um, I was, I actually watched that video that, that got posted on Facebook after Gray won a match at OAC or whatever. And um, oh, my Opa Ron was, was there, um, you know, you talked to him a little bit and that was just cool to see, but, uh, no, you know, we, we try and stay as positive as possible. And, you know, we try to look at the, the good side of things and, uh, you know, you know, when you're dealing with death, there isn't a lot of, uh, upside to that, but, um, you know, we just, you know, we, we talk, we, we vent to each other and we, and we just try to get through it as, is you know, as, I don't want to say as easy, but as easy as possible, you know? So I think that's, that's what we do pretty well as a family is communicating. Okay. So I like your shirt, by the way. Hell to pit. Yeah. yeah. Um, this whole recruiting process, you know, your dad runs um, one of the best clubs in the United States of America with Burnett Trained Wrestling. Um, mm-hmm. You were someone who was targeted by a lot of schools. Why pit? And, you know, how did your dad help you through it? How did your uncle help you through it? Your mom, your grandparents. You got like, just such a great support network there. Yeah. Nick. How did you come – how did pit come into the mix and – and you know why not Big Ten? Why not Clarion? You know the Clarion answer. Yeah. The Clarion thing to me is yeah. A lot no, of people don't know there. the connection, maybe right? There. Yeah, it was definitely there. You know that was definitely an option. You know, a couple Big Ten schools were in there. Um, you know, Pitt kind of was was a late uh thing for me. You know, um, Connor Utsi, he's not he's not coaching at Pitt anymore, but um, he was on our Fargo staff, and uh, we kind of uh, built a relationship at, at at um Fargo training camp, and then um. You know, just just uh, kind of stayed in contact after Fargo. I know he co- dad coached me uh, throughout my Fargo run this year, and then um, you know I took a visit a couple days after Fargo after I got back and loved it. And then um, and then actually while I was on vacation, um, you know I I decided that that's where I wanted to be. And uh, you know I, it's just a, it's a, it's a great place to be. You know they got one of the best coaching staffs in the country, I think. And then, you know, the, the guys on the team are just, are just super welcoming and, and super, uh, super friendly. And it just feels like home. So, um, and I, that's kind of why I chose it. You know, when you look at, uh, you know, what they're doing with, uh, coach Gavin and I don't know, did you pay attention to any of the ACC coverage I did this year? Not much. I know they had, I know, I know they had a pretty good dual meet year and, you know, I, I know they were, um, you know, they're, they're near the top of the ACC, I think. Listen, they had an ACC tournament. Let's just put that out there. Yeah. They had yeah. Wenzel knocked off. He beat Kennedy Monday. Then he beat David yeah. McFadden. Dude, that guy won yeah, a the, monster yeah. weight class. Yeah. Crazy. And then, you yeah. know, uh, Nino Bonacorsi, he qualified. Uh, and then you look Mickey. at Matthews, a guy you're going to be – I don't know if you guys are ever going to yeah. be competing against each other for a weight class, but that's a guy yeah. that you're going to be training with a lot, right? Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, they had just a really good tournament. I was really – I think mm. they had three champs. And then Mickey Phillippe's yeah. coming back. And these guys are going to be teammate tiers. Um, yeah, for sure. When you see that and they got like such a solid program and they're not so on such on an upswing and they bring a recruit in like you amongst other PA recruits that they brought in, how confident yeah. does that make you uh, for the direction of the program at Pittsburgh? Oh, it it, uh, it makes me. It's, I'm super excited. You know, I, I I couldn't be more excited to get out there um, this summer and start training. You know, hopefully, you know this this virus thing kind of passes by because I'm supposed to get out there. I think end of June for for some summer classes and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm I'm hoping I still get to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm just excited. You know, I can't wait. I can't wait to start scrapping with uh, some of the older guys and uh. And just get in there and start 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 banging. What did you do now? You're an 18 year old kid. Are you? You're 18, aren't you? 17. I you're only 18. 17. Yeah. Are you going to be 18 by the time you go to Pitt? Yeah. Yeah. In April. April 29th. Okay. So April 29th here next month, a month from today, yeah. basically. Yeah. The 29th of March. Um. You know, like what? What's a kid do right now? What do kids? What are you doing? Like, I talked to Cole Hibner yesterday. I talked Patty Gallagher. Yeah. I think he like both guys. Those guys they run. Patty Gallagher said he's been yeah. running. You've actually run yeah. cross country. Those two guys yeah, are yeah. big, big, gigantic, muscled up dudes. Yeah. You're a 138 pounder, and your dad likes to run. You've been doing a lot of running. Yeah. What are you doing? 
yeah, I've, I've been running. Uh, we got a we got a little air dye in our basement, so you know I get on that when I can. Um, you know, just and just trying trying to stay active. You know, if I can find a place to maybe try to get a lift in, you know, that's you know that that's good. If, if not, you know, I'll get a run in, do some pull ups, push ups, something just to just to stay active and and try to not just sit around all day. You know, um, that's what you know. My dad and I, and Nate, have talked about. Um, you know, just kind of having a schedule still, so we don't have. Um, we're not just sitting around all day trying to find something to do every day. What is the so. schedule? I talked to him the other day in the morning, I want to say, and he's like, yeah, they're still asleep. It was like 10 or 11 yeah. o'clock. You guys sleeping in late? Yeah. Yeah. That, that might've been the day he's like, yeah, we need to, we need to start establishing, you know, some, some kind of schedule around here. So yeah. Um, you know, usually I can't speak for Nate, but I'm up nine thirty ish around there. And, um, you know, I try to work out in the morning most times, but sometimes it waits till the afternoon. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of like football fields and tracks still open right now, so if I can get to one of those, you know, that that's nice. But yeah, and then and then kind of just you know make some food, chill for a little bit, and then you know just keep trying to stay active. We just got a dog, so I take the dog for for a walk sometimes. Okay. Um... If Pitt has online classes this summer, are you going to go to Fargo again? What are you doing in that situation? Yeah, so we haven't even really talked, like came together and talked about that. Um, I think the original plan, if I was going to be at Pitt, would be just to just to train and no Fargo. But um, if, if they're going online then, and they keep Fargo, um, then, then I, I guess that's probably a pretty good plan. I think, you know, if I'm not at Pitt, I'm – probably should go so i think that'll be cool what has helped your in the whole recruiting process what do you think um obviously you went out and you got it done you know you placed in the iron man twice was it three times three. i placed freshman year Did you placed freshman year yeah what'd you take uh six, i mean i hit the semis and then i tripled dip, lost to julian tag and then just a couple other studs took six so you took six Sixth, sixth, fifth? Yeah. You didn't place as a sophomore? No. Okay. No. Nope. So we got Iron Man, three time Iron Man placer. Did you do Super 32? Yeah, I placed one time this past so year. So you placed Super 32. Fargo, two time mm -hmm. finalist in freestyle, Cadet and Junior. Right? Yeah. Your dad coaches one of the most successful clubs in America. <laughs> you know, yeah. Your dad's club coach for the Steber Brothers, my nephew Ian, Nathan Tomasello. Cantasari, yeah. Sauls are a lot of these like really good guys, right? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, like absolute freak club. What do you think helped your recruiting the most, Nick? Um, I think just the, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, I did a lot, you know, placing at these big tournaments and stuff, but, um, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to my dad and Scott, you know, they have connections, they have, you know, they know these guys that are trying to recruit me. So they give a lot of, give me a lot of insight as to, as to guys that I should look into and, um, you know, and not, not really like not look into, but you know, they, they, they point me in the right direction. And, um, you know, obviously my dad was all for Pitt when, uh, when they were recruiting me and, um, you know, I talked about it with Scotty too. And he's like, yeah, dude, those guys are, you know, they're some of the best. So, um, you know, I think, I think just, just the insight that they've given me and, and, um, you know, kind of, kind of guided me in the right direction. I think um, academics. Your dad was, you know, your dad was a non qualifier. We call him a non qualifier now. My brother Chad was a non qualifier. I believe yeah. Scotty was a non qualifier. Um, you really did not take a page out of the Miller or Burnett notebook <laughs> for yeah. grades. You had really good grades. You probably were borderline if you'd have taken your ACT again. Probably could have done an Ivy League school if you would have wanted to. Yeah. Um, why yeah. were grades, why was that such a big thing in your life? You know, like I know your dad talks about it constantly, but why were grades, yeah. why was academics such a stress thing for you, Mickey? Oh yeah. I mean, um, you know, my parents, my mom, especially, you know, beat, beat it down on us from, from when we were little though, that we were going to have good grades. My dad's always been, you know, don't, don't be like me, you know, academic, academically wise, because, you know, I had to sit out a year so. Um, yeah, academics have always been kind of big, um, um, for me just, you know, trying, trying to get all my work turned in and, and, and not miss a lot of work and, 
you know, just, just keeping them as high as possible. And then, yeah, the ACT thing was, uh, it was pretty cool. You know, I went in, didn't know what to expect and came out with the 24. So, you know, after the first time, so that's like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. Um, you know, and, and the academics, academically, I'm pretty proud of myself just because, you know, it's, um, four years of high school carrying a, carrying a pretty high GPA is, is, isn't, isn't easy. So I think that that's big for me. Do you think you're more Fairchild than Burnett when it comes to academics? Oh, definitely. A hundred percent for sure. 100%. Didn't your uncle, your uncle just passed away. Didn't he get like a thirty something on the ACT? Yeah, yeah. He was a he was a chemical engineer, so he he was a smart guy for sure. Yeah, he got like a thirty plus on his ACT. That guy was like yeah. super smart. Yeah, he's and a then, genius man. Your crazy. mom, your mom was pretty smart too. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And then we were talking about it. Uh, your grandpa Dick, your grandpa Dick's a really good uh, uh, tennis player. Yeah, he's a, he's he's really good at tennis. And my grandma plays tennis too. Um, she's not as competitive as my grandpa is, but they they play they play tennis together too. So that's pretty cool. They are just like mutants. Oh yeah, like, no doubt. How about your dad? Your dad told me he uh, jumped rope the other day for like thirty. He's like, I was yeah, gonna I do twenty five minutes. I, jump, I can't jump rope like that. It, it gets boring to me. You know, I got to be moving more. You know, he jumps. He said. He did like 2,000 jumps or something like that, and he's keeping track. And I was like, how do you do that, man? He's 50. Yeah. <laughs> he's 50. <laughs> hey, I remember we were out at the old barn, at Piecraft's barn. Yeah. And I remember he got these dumbbells, and he went out and did a run one day, and he came back, and he was like bleeding everywhere. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh and I was like, he was like, oh, I was running, and the dumbbells, and I didn't realize how heavy they were going to be. And he was carrying <laughs> And they blistered his no hand. Way. I said, why don't you just throw him in the ditch and go back with your truck and pick him up? Well, I never yeah. thought of that. <laughs> Hubbard net of so him, right? Hubbard net of him. Yeah, uh, right. He just proceeded to bleed everywhere and carry Yeah, he just so. bled everywhere. And then... <laughs> <laughs> no way. Like, what are you doing? That's oh, funny. what a meathead. Okay. Where do we go from here, man? Where do, where does... Where is our society going from here? Where are we? You're you're a 17 year old kid. I know you obviously probably don't have the answer, but yeah. what's the new normal, man? Man, it's it's crazy. You know, it's 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 hard to adjust to be to being inside all the time. You know, from a guy that likes to you know be outside and you know at least at least hanging hanging with stuff. It's uh it's hard. It's you know um you know I have a select group of kids that I still get to hang out with. You know from from time to time during during this, but uh. You know, as to being in school, you know, I'd, I'd rather be in school right now than, than doing Me all too. this. Me too. So it's like. Me too. It's, it's crazy. Man. Me too. I want to go back it's to school. Crazy. And I love, I love hanging out with my kids all day and hiking and doing all that stuff. I'm going to go run after this. And um, yeah. I like enjoy that stuff. But like at the same time, it gets to the point like I can only hike with my kids, you know, because I so think we're going to actually that. do a hike together. And like we had to postpone it because they went to the like the the no the lockdown the essential yeah. travel and we were actually going to get together. You were you and your brother were going to come over. We yeah. were going to go hit some parks up, but like it's just wild right now. Yeah, no, it's it's insane, and it's you know it's, it's I think it's totally you know it's essential and it's needed um you know to to, to flatten the curve and and that kind of thing, but it it just sucks you know it's it's just a tough situation for for um you know everybody i don't think the people in new york city obviously it's a large populated area with a with a the population density is very high There's yeah a lot of people per square mile um but i don't know if they took it as serious as i think a lot of people like at ohioans we've taken it really serious yeah. i feel like oh yeah no yeah there's there's not a lot of people out by by where i live for sure it's crazy it's wild um Will you go to Ohio qualifiers and stuff like that just to go be active? Because they're just they're condensing your state. There's no qualifiers. It's just a yeah. state this year. Will you go to that? Yeah, I think you know. I think our tournament already got either canceled or postponed for the end of April. So um, you know, depending if they have any qualifiers left, you know. I'll no, there's no qualifiers. The qualifiers are all canceled. Okay. It's just a state tournament. Yeah. Th yeah. Then. I'll probably end up going there just because you know if I if I end up do going to Fargo you know I'll have to get on a team somehow so and you know, I don't like to use the pull petition thing it's not like I don't know you know you're so, not yeah, you like to go and, and and present yourself yeah awesome man um 
You got anything else for me? I like just talking to you. I like just just chatting yeah, no, it up. Yeah, for sure. What what have you been up to? Just doing a lot of hiking and stuff. Yeah, hiking. Um, right now we're building Thomas a race car bed. That was okay. why I didn't want. I was an extra half hour late talking to you. I had to help my wife bring yeah. his old crib down. Tommy's growing <laughs> up. They grow up fast. You know what? I remember when you were in a crib, and we. I remember when you were in a crib. I remember when you were born, and you guys <laughs> lived on Marcel's Avenue. Yep. Right. South yep. of where you live now, right? Yeah. Yeah, one of my buddies actually lives in that house, or lived in that house for a little bit. Nate then, never lived there, did he? Did Nate uh, live there? He might have. He might have been there for a year, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure, but yeah. Hey, yeah. where's the? Can you stand up and show me the pinball machine? Is it still down there? Oh yeah, it doesn't work anymore, but um, yeah, it's down here. So the quick story with the pinball machine is, we took the legs off of it at your old house, and I stood. So I stood. There, that pinball machine, those two front steel legs, you see them? Yeah. It wouldn't get out your door. So I <laughs> stood with that bottom corner resting on my thighs for half an hour. No way. Oh, I think I have heard that story. Yes. Before. I stood in crazy. your old That's... basement where you were born and raised. Not born, but raised. Yeah. Where they brought you home from the hospital. And I had the, I had the, uh, that thing right there sat on my thighs for half an hour. No exaggeration. Not like. Uh, it was 10 minutes and he's saying a half an hour, a yeah. half an hour. That thing is crazy heavy. Too. It's crazy like, heavy. And I stood there for half an hour. <laughs> but you know, my dad always crazy. told me, Mickey, if you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. Yeah, for sure. I know for <laughs> not to know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even if they are a master hybrid like you. Um, yeah. Broadcasting. Tell me about broadcasting, why you love it. You helped me out twice this year. You did a really yeah. good job. Um, I think you learn some stuff like when you're broadcasting yeah. you kind of want to talk to people like they're not watching that they're listening right mm -hmm. what do you yeah. like about broadcasting is that still a direction you think you want to go yeah it's it's super cool and it's you know I, I thank you for the opportunities this year you know it's I like it um uh just because you know I, I like to, to to give people you know I like to tell um stories to people and uh and just kind of present stuff so you know I think that's like something that I like and, and um, you know, that, that, I, that I will move forward with probably in the future. So, um, but yeah, it was definitely really cool to get to share that with you and, and, and do that this year. You know, I've never really done it, never really got the opportunity to, so it was cool. Awesome, man. I'm excited for your future in that. And hopefully you're, you're going to be doing more than just internet, but I don't know if we're, I don't know what direction we're going here. You know, obviously when I worked with flow wrestling, they really mm -hmm. revolutionized it towards the, the internet end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know yeah. there was a lot of, of uh, uh, internet or a lot of people that were like, oh, no, wrestling's got to be on TV. But I think we're pretty comfortable yeah. with our niche on the internet. Yeah, I think it's taken off really, really good. And, you know, at this point, I think there's a lot of people on the internet that are, that are kind of buying into to flow wrestling and, and a lot of these like other wrestling Track, so track does a great cool. job. I'm doing some work with Track now. They do a great job. Um, yeah. Andy Hamilton does a great job. Obviously, Mark Bader does a great job at Flow Wrestling. So, two really good yeah. guys that I've worked with. That I mean, I can't say a bad thing about either one of those guys. They love wrestling. They're maybe a little yeah, crazy no about it. Maybe that's a bad thing yeah. I'll say about them. But I think they're great guys. But um, yeah, yeah, man, it, it's no pretty doubt. wild when you look at it. Uh, the evolution of it, and that's how you were raised on it. You were raised on yeah. internet. You know. You could watch those Big Ten Friday night and Sunday duels, right? But yeah. I think you're just as happy being on track wrestling or flow wrestling. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, flow's, flow's covered a lot of um, of stuff that I've been at. So it's super cool just to be able to go on there and, and watch video. And, and same with track. You know, it's, it's, it's really cool just to kind of go on and, and, and look at the matches that you wrestled. So, you know, that, that's good that they've, they've kind of done that. Yeah, that, that is like, and then the other thing is the ACC network does a really good job of, uh, did you get to watch any of those ACC duels? Cause you could switch back and forth between big 10 duels and ACC yeah. duels. They did a really good job. Yeah. And obviously the, the, the conference got so much better this year Four oh, four no, of the six sure. teams ended up in the top 10. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and you know, Duke's, you know, Duke's there, you know, they just, I think they, took a couple red shirts this year or something, but you know, Duke's a really good team too. So there's going to be six pretty good teams, you know, kind of 
scrapping it out from from here on out, and it's, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, and like you're saying, Duke did redshirt the the uh, fine silvers, and the dude that was state champ for Ignatius, uh, Caden Russell, yeah. had an injury. I yeah. want to say so they got like three really good guys, bona fide like AA contenders yeah. back. So I think this year was kind of an anomaly for them, and they've been competitive. I mean, they have an All American every yeah. year. You know, and they're yeah. Ohio guys. They've had Ohio guys be All Americans, obviously, with Jacob Casper. Yeah. Um, so they do a really nice job. And like I said, Caden Russell, he's a, an Ohio guy. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, the ACC's it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, obviously, no, there's, there's not the, the there's not there. the numbers that there is in the Big Ten, but the the quanti- yeah. the quality is there. Maybe not the quantity, right? Yeah. So all right, yeah. you got anything else for me, buddy? Nah, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time, and it's it's made it a little bit better, you know today awesome man well hey real quick i'm gonna cut this video stick around with me all right okay sounds good all right hail to pit go pioneers good luck moving forward stick around all right all right man we'll do thanks mickey